Hello, and welcome to this chapter in our ongoing series of tutorials that will help you get familiar with using Corel's Video Studio Pro X2. In today's short lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound feature. Dolby Digital is an audio compression and noise reduction format. It supports channel configurations from mono up to six discrete channels, referred to as 5.1. This format first allowed and popularized surround sound. It was first developed for movie theaters and spread to laser discs and DVD. Dolby found that many of the limitations in optical sound stemmed directly from its significantly high background noise. To filter this noise, the high frequency response of theater playback systems was deliberately curtailed. To make matters worse, to increase dialogue intelligibility over such systems, sound mixers were recording soundtracks with so much high frequency preemphasis that high distortion resulted. The first film to utilize Dolby noise reduction was 1971's A Clockwork Orange. Since then, Dolby expanded into stereo noise reduction, multi-speaker surround sound, and has also become a standard in DVD and HDTV playback. Video Studio X2 Standard employs Dolby Digital Stereo, while upgrading to Video Studio X2 Pro provides 5.1 digital surround sound. Let me show you how this works. I've opened up a finished version of the video I've been using in past tutorials. I'll now scroll to where the music is at its loudest so we can best experience this effect. Now I can locate this part by either playing it until I find it, or better yet, let's go to the audio view. Here we can clearly see where it's loudest by the larger waveforms that are shown. So let's move the playback head to about here, which nicely corresponds to the words liftoff. The surround sound mixer panel should now be visible. If it's not at the forefront, just select it by doing so right here. The default setting is Dolby Stereo Digital. As you can see when I move this icon here back and forth from the right to left, etc. You'll also notice that when I did so, a keyframe was laid down in the audio track itself. This keyframe denotes a change in either direction or volume of the audio output or both. The cool thing about Video Studio is I can actually change the channel location in real time as I play it back. Watch this. Don't worry about the uh, stuttering volume. It will actually come out just fine once we render it. Notice the multiple keyframes. So now if I play this back, you'll notice the icon moving from left to right across my stereo system. Again, all in real time. But let's go one better. By enabling 5.1 surround sound at this icon here, I can now move the setting all around the room, not just back and forth. Again, in real time, like so. Again, don't worry about the stuttering audio. It'll fix itself in the end. Alright, let's play this back. Watch the icon. It's actually swirling around the room. Now that's pretty awesome. Again, when it plays back after it's done, after it's all rendered, it'll sound great. Finally, to make sure you're saving in Dolby Digital, just make sure your audio settings are correct. When you create your video file, whichever that may be, go to Options, Compression, and make sure your audio format is set to Dolby Digital Audio. Thanks again, and we'll see you in a future lesson.